Hi guys, it's Nicole, and I am here with a Scrap Lift Saturday video. Uh, this is my first project for the Crafty Maven channel. Uh, on my personal channel, which is Coley Bing on YouTube, I have been working my way through uh, month and review layouts for 2014, and basically what I do is I will sit down and and figure out what do I want to scrapbook for each month and then any leftover photos where it's just like one picture or it's a random cell phone picture I like to compile them into a review of the month sort of a look back of just kind of this was our daily lives I am a scrapbooker that I like to try to get as many photos on a layout as I possibly can so the month in review is sort of making me feel less guilty about all these photos that I've taken and I don't really know what to do with. This is sort of how I'm working my way through those. And with that, I have been scrap lifting old layouts that Nicole McGork from Two Piece did. So with this being the sort of throwback to Two Piece week, um, I figured it would be a good opportunity to sort of get back into my process for these. Um, so I had just gone through her blog and I printed out, a, you know, some different monthly reviews that she had done, and I kind of like to just use them as a starting off point. Sometimes I will try and scrap lift it closely, other times not so much. Sometimes it's more of just maybe how she used the collage and what she did with the leftover space. Um just kind of different different ways. Uh, the one that I'm going to do today I am probably going to stick pretty close to it only because the whole time that I've been doing this I am trying to work through some older my mind's eye that I have in my stash. I have two big paper files full of it because they used to be my favorite manufacturer so I'm just kind of going with using my mind's eye for all of 2014. So I am going to stick pretty close to her November one, and the photos that I'm using are actually from my November of 2014 as well, and I haven't used this paper collection in my series yet, so I'm going to probably stick pretty close to this, depending on what works for me and what I like. Um, these three that I'm going to show you real quick are on my channel if you want to see the process video for them. So this was for January. And then my February one, I used a different layout that she had on her YouTube channel to sort of scrap lift as far as where some of the elements were. And then this was March, which I kind of just did my own thing only because for some reason when I printed my photos they were pretty big. So I'm going to set those aside. So here... I've got my photos ready to go. I used a Carrie Bradford photo template that was four rows and then I just didn't fill in this one for these photos. Um, but you can see here on hers, I don't know if you're going to be able to tell, she doesn't have much space between her photos. So I already kind of know ahead of time I may have some spacing issues and I may just kind of have to work around because I have these eighth of an inch gaps between my photos. So my collage is probably going to end up being bigger than hers. So I'm just kind of going to tweak it a little bit to what my photos printed out as. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside. And I just pulled papers from that line, which was the My Mind's Eye, Stella, and Rose. And it's the Hattie collection. But at the same time, I kind of just grabbed anything that was in my folder that kind of matched it. So I have used part of this on a previous layout, and I wish I had two full sheets of this one left because I would have loved to have used this as my background and had this big layer, but I think I'm just going to kind of cheat and make this look like it's a full layer behind. Okay. 
And then I liked this yellow, this golden yellow, gray polka dot. And then I'm leaning towards using either this to put my journaling on or just some plain cardstock. And then these are just two more patterns from that collection. And then I'm trying to decide which of these I want to go with for my background. This is from the Hattie Collection. This is from The Sweetest Thing. So it's not textured, so it's a little bit different. But the colors and the fact that this is sort of that dirty, beat up kind of looking thing, I feel like it works with it, but I'm not sure yet what I'm going to end up doing for my background. And then when I pull embellishments, I don't take a lot of time on it because I know most of what I pull, I'm not going to end up using. So I just took two or three minutes to kind of just dig through my embellishments. And I grabbed these brads because they do match the collection. I don't know if I have anything else that came with this collection. I didn't see anything. Um, I grabbed some teal and yellow enamel dots. And then these wood crane ones are my favorite. Um, I pull these out all the time. Still haven't used them. Hoping maybe I can use one. Some chic tags just to kind of tuck along the top. Um, I liked the blue button in this Halloween miscellany from October afternoon, so I may pull these two blue buttons out. And then I just dropped this bag of buttons from Farm Girl. And then trying to use up these, I like this wooden one. I also found these little tiny ones, and then I just grabbed some label stickers, some word stickers, and some alpha stickers all from my mind's eye, different lines, different years. Uh, some more chic tags. I found these tags from Fancy Pants that may work with the brown. And then I just pulled out um, this box. This is not organized. It's an old stamp case and it just kind of has random embellishments that I just sort of shove in here and then every once in a while when I need to kind of just go looking for stuff, I will just kind of come in here and this is where most of my, my mind's eye die cuts are. So I may take a closer look in here and see if I've got anything from the Hattie collection and possibly pull those out, but I'm going to kind of play it by ear. But I just kind of shove everything in here. Like, these are leftovers from a sticker sheet. I mean, this is just random mixed up stuff. But this is just what works for me. So I just kind of pulled this out. And I'm just going to kind of have it out on my desk. And when I'm feeling like I need something, I may dig through that if none of this is working. I kind of don't want to go back to my stash and be looking for more. So I've got everything ready to go and I'm going to take you guys along and see my process for scrap lifting an older layout from Nicole McGork who was a garden girl at Two Peas. Alright so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and trim down my two little photo collages and I'm just trying to leave as small of a white border as I can because I know I'm already going to have some spacing issues as far as comparing my photos to the um, original that I'm scrap lifting. So I'm just kind of setting everything over here to the left of my paper trimmer as I am figuring things out. And I've already decided I'm going to go ahead and do my computer generated journaling on that really light tone on tone yellow paper. And I decided on the larger grid paper for my background. And then I'm just trimming out a large mat from that pretty multicolored floral paper. And I'm just using that photo that I had printed off of. Nicole McGork's blog and just kind of using the photo as my guide as far as papers and just kind of guessing on sizes based again on what my photo collage is sized to. 
and just trimming down that little scrap of dark blue paper that I had left over from a previous project and instead of having a large blue mat behind all my papers I'm just gonna kind of cheat and tuck some scraps on the sides so I'm just laying everything out kind of making sure that I have enough room for everything and then I think this was when I had figured out I kind of needed another I needed another sheet of paper behind that blue floral so here I've grabbed my my mind's eye stash and I grabbed this light teal tone on tone pattern and I'm just gonna trim it so that it's a tiny bit bigger than this floral paper so that it will act as a mat And then I am laying my photos back out and kind of trying to make sure that I'm going to have enough space for my journaling, my title, and then whatever is left over is sort of what I have to work with as far as embellishments. So since I like the way that that is all looking, I'm going to go ahead and commit to that and start attaching all the different layers together. And I'm just leaving them laid out on my desk how they were and just kind of working top to bottom to get everything glued together. Nothing's glued to the background paper at this point. Okay, my next step was I just went and sat on my computer and just typed up very brief descriptions of what was in the photos, printed it out on just regular print paper, and then when I brought it over to my pattern paper, I needed to resize my typed up journaling, so I went ahead and did that. And then I ended up having to run it through my printer a couple of times. I didn't realize at the time that my paper guide was not pushed over and I couldn't figure out why everything was printing crooked. So once I got that figured out, got it printed, trimmed up, and then I'm going to start attaching my photo collage to my journaling area and attach these top layers down onto the page. And then from here I'm going to go and start working on the top part of the layout where there's only about an inch of space to work with. So I'm just kind of looking for things that I can kind of tuck in behind the photo collage and just sort of have some interest at the top. Those little chic tag index looking card things that I had originally wanted to use. Um, I didn't like just the fact that the patterns on them were all sort of stars and I didn't think that they matched the My Mind's Eye paper very well. So, excuse me, I ended up just pulling out this other little library card from a different chic tag set and I cut it in half so that I could still use the bottom half that had a cute little image of some books stacked up. And then I went through my stamps and I found this old date stamp set from Allie Edwards and I'm just going to stamp the month of November on that library card and then I'm just going to take an October afternoon date stamp and I'm only going to ink up the year and just put that next to the November and I'm going to apologize I forgot to zoom out for a little bit here this uh, navy blue tag I found in that box of miscellaneous embellishments and I want to say it's from Fancy Pants so I just trimmed it down so that it would fit behind my stuff. This little clothespin sticker, again, is from that box of leftovers that I'm kind of digging through. And I'm just kind of looking for different stuff that I can kind of tuck in and just kind of add a little bit of interest at the top of the layout. With the layouts, using all of these photos, I don't really do a whole lot of embellishing just because there's not a lot of room left over and I really just kind of want the emphasis to be on 
everything that went on during the month and the journaling. So a lot of times I'll just kind of go really simple as far as embellishments. And I'm just grabbing different stickers from anything that I'm finding in my stash that's matching the colors. I grab I grabbed, oh, here's when I decided I needed to go ahead and attach everything to my background paper. And then I can finish adding everything to the top. This little blue piece of paper was the bottom of that blue tag. I just decided to go ahead and use it, so I just flipped it around and tucked it behind my layers. I grabbed a tiny paper clip and then I went ahead and used a glue dot to kind of hold down the twine from the tag and then I just grabbed some wood grain enamel dots and I'm just going to sprinkle those across the top and then while my title is cutting out on my silhouette I'm just kind of trying to figure out where I want to add buttons and brads and sort of circle embellishments towards the bottom uh, Nicole McGork's layout, she had used these really pretty resin flowers, and I had a couple in my stash, but when I was looking at them, I didn't like that they were really thick, and I knew that once I put them in a, in a page protector in my album, that they were going to eventually wear a hole in the page protector, so I decided not to go with those. So I just kind of stuck to any sort of circular embellishment that I had already pulled out. So I like to add a glue dot to the back of my button and then tie the bow. It's just a little bit easier for me to tie it. And then I will usually just put some either glossy accents or multi-matte medium on the knot just to kind of keep it from coming untied in my album. And then I decided to use one of those little stick pins that looks like a, I think it's a leaf. And then here you can see I've cut my title out and I went ahead and put it together off camera just because it takes me a while. And I cut the background layer out of that same floral pattern. And I'm just putting glue dots on the back of it to make sure that it's going to hold. And then now that I've got my title on there, I'm going to go ahead and put those three embellishments down on the left. And I'm kind of in my mind trying to think of what I can put with November to sort of make it more of an actual title and not just the month sitting there. So after I put this brad in, I'm going to put some washi on the back so it doesn't get caught on my page protectors in my album. And I'm going to go looking through my stash of stamps. And I came across this older Allie Edwards stamp set and it had the phrase remember, so I just decided that my title was going to read Remember November. And I'm going to take some Java Bean ink from Ranger and use that to stamp Remember. And then when I pulled that button off, you can see I tore my pattern paper, so I just made sure that when I was putting it back on that I covered it. And then I'm just going to add that other brad, the little chipboard element, and I think I did an enamel dot over on the right. And that was it for my page. So you can see I stuck pretty close to Nicole McGork's layout. It just kind of happened to be that the papers I wanted to use she had previously used, so I thought, hey, let's go with it. So here you can see some close-ups of some of the different clusters, the title, the journaling, and all of that. So um, I am excited to be on the Crafty Maven channel, and I look forward to future challenges and videos and everything like that. 
uh, link to my channel will be below, and I will catch you guys later. Thanks!